All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Oh, man. These calls on Thursdays, sometimes they're kind of uh, hit or miss just because I missed this call so much, you know, and um, so I appreciate you guys actually hopping on here. And some of you guys came just straight from the uh, Y Vegas slash um, our opportunity uh, call right into this one. And so I'm not 100% sure where we left off last time. Now, I do have um, some notes I remember from the last time that I wrote down that I will kind of just start this call this way. And if you guys have any questions, this will be a very interactive call um, for, you know, I, I hope that there's value that's going to be here for you. Okay, that means pick my brain. I've been doing real estate for about 18 years now, and I've done everything in the single family space we've built we've done uh lease options i've had i bought duplexes um you know airbnbs so long-term rental short-term rental mid-term rentals we've built from ground up we've bought land and built before uh what other strategies there's burn like renovating a property and refinancing renovating a property and selling we plan a few underwriting examples Oh, right. Okay. So I think I had a couple of people that said they wanted to bring um, the under like deals to actually underwrite, but we can do that. Let me just, let me just find anything in my email that has a, just grab an OM or something from here. I get so many deals all the time and we'll just kind of do a practice run on any deal that I, that I grab here. Wow. I got so much emails. Um, off market property. No, not this. But you know, let's make this engaging. So if you have questions, oh, what's this one? If you have questions, where you're at, what do you want to hear? Um, like, you know, I want to know, like, what's the Where's everybody at in terms of real estate? Like if it's too advanced, if most people here don't even know like the very, very basics, then underwriting a deal might be kind of challenging. All right. But if not, um, we can start there. I think underwriting deal might, you know, hopefully people can follow along. I will pull up my underwriting sheet and we'll pull a deal. One sec. I'm just gonna grab one for the purposes of learning. Alex, why don't you just do the Vegas one? Uh, because technically I cannot be, um, you know, just putting it on for. I mean, I, we could. I guess we could. Let's see. I don't know if there's any SEC laws with people that aren't privately invited to be able to see. Then don't the risk it. No, I think we're good. Um, that deal kind of had like a PNL sheet instead. I want to be able to show everyone what they'll normally see on a T12. Okay, so a trailing 12. A T12 is called a trailing 12 when you're looking at financials. Okay, we'll grab this one. So this is a deal that we've kind of recently been looking at and possibly making an offer on. So if we go into this, this is going to be a little bit advanced for people. And so this is a great time to ask questions when 
when they come up. No questions are dumb. All right, that's the that's the number one thing. So let's go to this. Can everybody see this? What you'll start with is a, uh, it's called an offer memorandum. Okay, so an OM. When you, this will probably be the first thing that you see when you're looking at a deal is a broker goes and pays a lot of money to get this done. It's basically designed to, you know, sell, uh, sell you on the deal itself. So let's look at the opportunity. I haven't seen, I haven't looked at this in a little bit. So they want $9 million on this deal, 56 units. Um, let's begin actually, should we do, no, let's just go through the table itself. Okay, so it's uh, the average rents here are 1,055. So this is, um, okay, built here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, their NOI, their actual NOI is $356,000 a year. NOI represents net operating income. So it's their gross income, which is $596,000 minus their expenses, which I guess is $240,000 and change. And you have an actual NOI of $356,29. And we will ask for the financials, okay? And then I have the financials in the folder. folder. So they're saying that the performa, okay, that means performa, don't ever underwrite anything based on performa, is, um, you know, 485000 And they're saying that the performa gross rents is five ninety six. So already when I look at this, I can see that there is some uh, discrepancies in what they put because they put average rents is ten fifty five, but that's their performa rent. So you, you got to think like now you got to do the due diligence in there and see like, what are they actually charging? Okay. And then they have a video, which is great, I guess. It's cool. You know, this is in this downtown Las Vegas area. And this is what's, you know, what's coming up. It's a motel conversion into apartments. I like this top right picture here. Cause right next to it, this is, I know this is a class a big building next to it. And then here's your, I guess, your class B, B minus type of building, but it's fully new renovated, I guess. I remember walking this property and this middle container, they literally dropped it into the middle. Svedlo, I think you were there for the walkthrough when we did this, right? Yep, that's a gym. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> it's really nice. They, a hey, gym. they built a gym. How freaking smart is this? They built an amenity for people here. It's actually a gym. It's pretty cool inside. And, oh, there it is. Like, it's pretty basic, but you can work out in there. You know, not like a big, but, and then they also got a fire, like a barbecue pit. Like, it's very cute. It's cool. I like it. I like the location of it. The units inside, newly renovated, like ours, right? Um, looks, you know, pretty, pretty good um, stuff that they put in there. This is right next to the world market, which is pretty awesome as well. Location is really good. That's what it looks like at night. So, you know, I took, I like when I saw this property, actually, this is what we're actually going to do with our property in, uh, in the downtown Fremont area. It's, this is what is, is, is wanted, you know, they want art, they want different colors, they want cool things. So we're going to do this on our property as well. So. Our Fremont experience is up here. So our building's actually like right there somewhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, like seven blocks away over there. But this is down towards like, there's a lot more like, uh, you know, land and a lot more like kind of junk around. But this is called the art district. So there, it's also starting to come up. It's not as developed as the Fremont area. Cause this is really that that's where we are. We want to kind of be over there right now and they'll move down this way and they'll move out that way, but it's a good location, I think to start. And there see the big class a building here, more, more of these are going to be built. This whole area is going to be full of these big buildings in 10, 15 years. Okay. So that means all of these little buildings, including our small multifamily 
this this unit right here the one that we're looking at because i know the area what's probably going to happen what the my dog just fell off the couch you're right <laughs> Uh, uh, somebody's probably going to buy this piece of land plus the other ones around it. You see these other two properties next to it. Let's see if we can find it closer. These properties next to it. They'll probably buy all of this out and build another big building like this next to it. And then this piece of land will have another big building. These properties, these small houses will be bought out and put together here, another big building. And we're kind of like that. And that's what I think the exit's going to be for all of these smaller multifamily units. And just like I'm willing to pay more for single family houses, like I'm willing to pay somebody that's maybe right here, this little lot, I'm willing to pay them more money so that I can knock this house down and build a multifamily, build one of these in here. I'm willing to pay these guys more money so we can build one of these. I would like to build one of these but that'll be down the road. So some bigger player will gobble us up that way. They will be willing to overpay. Oh, your building's worth $7 million. Here's eight and a half. Okay, see you later. And they're going to build 200 units, 400 units over there. Um, the outlet mall's right there. That's the world market. Um, this is actually a really nice building that's right here. I drive through this a lot. And... Oh, so they're already, these are, they're saying that these are already under construction. Under development. Okay. So when you look at, when you look at an offering, like a deck, what you're looking for is all the attractions to when you get this deal under contract and you're going to start generating and getting investors, you want to find things from the deck. They went through great lengths to find the best things to get you to buy it, you want to take some of these stuff, some of, some of these images and some of the, the, the information they give you here. So price per unit is cool. It's basically around the same price that we're buying ours. Studios, just like ours. Everything's kind of pretty much the same. I actually, I actually really liked it when I was walking it. The broker was kind of a, like a dick. But he did allow us to bring like 15 people <laughs> with cameras onto this property, which is probably something that never happens. Um, okay, so look, this is actually kind of what you're going to be putting into your underwriting sheet. All right, so we're just kind of going to scroll through this. Oh, yes, I know this. This is, this is under underway. I live actually right back here somewhere around this thing currently where I am. So this is going to really, I wish I can buy the house that I live in right now. They're not budging, but they might. Vegas loop. Oh, the hard rock hotel is coming. High speed train. Oh, some of these things I didn't even know was here. Yeah, so there's a lot of big stuff coming to Vegas. You know, oh, Fountain Blue. So our boy from Legends, Chris uh, Craze, he is he has a five million dollar contract building the uh, all the special effects in the nightclub for Fountain Blue, which is pretty awesome. And this thing is like it's almost done. It's gonna be done by the end of the year. Oh, this is that MSG Sphere. These are just some other statistics. This is December 2021, so it's kind of outdated. But we could see that a lot of these are actually, their projections were real. All right, let's begin the underwrites. All right, so I'm going to share. This is the T12 that they sent me. This was back in November when we were looking at this deal. So let me share my whole screen here. All right. Don't mind my desktop. It is a little bit messy. 
and I just cleaned it up recently. I'll cover it. See, when I actually try to organize things into folders, it's harder for me to find it. Does anybody else have that problem? All right, this sheet is called the 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 Michael Blank sheet. He actually created this. So you can get this sheet. Uh, just go to Michael Blank's page and you can buy this thing with a little course of how to use it. Um, pretty cheap. It's like $150 or something. So once upon a time, I was giving it away. And then somebody got upset with me about it. Not even Michael Blank side, side, but somebody did. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not reselling it. I thought it was okay, but what do I know? You live and you learn. Okay. Can everybody see these things pretty clearly or do I need to make it bigger? Hello. Is anybody out there? Probably slightly bigger. Okay. Yeah, and you know, like I do these calls, it's really for you guys to, you know, engage and pick my brains and just kind of learn whatever you want to do. So get value if you're here, you know, if you're taking the time to be here, just get value, engage and, you know. All right. So this is what the sheet looks like. There's tabs on the bottom along the bottom. And it gives you some like guidance as well. Questions to ask. Make it bigger. All right. So first, there's something called the debt coverage ratio. All right. There's so much to cover. Um, I don't want to just jump right into the, the sheet. But what is a debt coverage ratio? It means that your NOI needs to be 1.25 or greater than the debt cost for the year. So if you have $100,000, that is the cost of your loan, okay, every year, your NOI needs to be $125,000 for them to give you the loan, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have to put up more of your cash, of your money. So this is one simple way to kind of take a, to, to see it. And I'll show you in the underwriting sheet. Um, that's some kind of questionnaires. Anyways, that's not, those aren't that important, but if you get it, check it out. There's other tabs that give you some information, but we're going to start with the scenarios. Okay. The scenarios tab. And most underwriting sheets will really look something along the lines of this. There's going to be this page where you can put in what the asking price is, 9 million. Okay. How many units? It was 56 units. And now we're going to have to see, we're going to have to play around with what down payment are we going to put on this deal? Okay. So most likely you want to just start with like 40 in today's market. Cause you're, you're, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. So some information in this underwriting sheet, you're going to have to go and find out others. You will get it from the T12 statement, which is on the right side. And it sh shows you the income. So let's take a look at their rental income, their total potential rents. Okay. So if they write this, do not fall for the total potential rents. Like you can use it as a guideline to just like, ah, uh, entertain it, but look at the actual rents. All right, look at the actual returns, uh, the income that they generate. So on this deal, um, oh, wow, interesting. They only put potential rents. Wow. Well, there's a lot of... Um, at least they're pretty detailed with their expenses and things like that. So when, when someone does this,
you're going to have to put in your, your own type of research on realistically what's going on. You're going to ask for the rent roll. Actually, let me see if I did ask for the rent roll in here. Actually, Alex, that was, this is Jen. That was going to be my question. At what point, once you make an offer and they have to provide like all the active leases, is there a timeline where they have to produce those? I know that yes. like due diligence is like 30 days, but they have to give it to you well in advance, right? Yeah. So, oh, they did have a rent roll here. Great. Okay, so this is like the underwriting side of it. You want to be as close as you can. Now, when you get the deal under contract, you do have about 30 days to 45 days or 60 days, depending on what you put in the contract, what you guys agree to, that will say, um, ah, look at this. So their rents are not, well. Wow. They will say, uh, it will say like 30, 60 days, something like that for the due diligence. And that's the time that you got to put in the work. You got to demand these things. I want the actual rents. And for the due diligence, even this rent roll that they give you, don't buy it. Like you got to walk every single unit. Hey, so unit 101 is Danny Griffith. Let me go. Let me go there, right? You go and check and make sure it's there. You can also ask for bank statements, okay? Bank statements, now bigger operations with real property management companies, it's going to be real. Stuff will be more real. These smaller deals, you're going to have to, A, do more due diligence, but B, you also got to know, know this market and what's possible for it, okay? We did close a deal in Fort Pierce that we couldn't even go through this. We have no idea. It's a storage deal, 300 units. We couldn't figure out who's who's got what, who's still here, who's delinquent, all that. We tried to figure it out on the front end, but it's it's impossible. But what we did know was, hey, the seller is going to lease back the warehouse to, from us for five years at twelve thousand five hundred. That's our 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 constant, and we know that that is going to cover almost all the expenses of the property. That means we still have like you know, 290 units of things to generate income from. Okay. Even if it was half empty, we would still be okay. So, um, you know, it's in four peers. We really like four peers. We like what's, what's happening there, the coming up of it, but it is by no means anything close to what's coming to Vegas, right? Four peers is kind of just like this rural area. That's just coming up a little bit with things coming to the area. I know Jen is over there and she has, Lots of opinions about the. the it's actually saturated too. now. <laughs> oh, That's that serious. Sad. Yeah. But also, the the value has increased really quick, you know. And also, like when people aren't like migrating over there, and people are more tight with their money, it's more challenging to have an area that is going to explode like that. Now, Fort Pierce is one of the. Fort Pierce, poor St. Lucie area, I know is one of the favorite retirement places in the country because um, it's not that expensive and it's still really beautiful. Really well, anywhere. Not, not Vegas. I do want to say that um, Fort Pierce is saturated with the nicer areas, but there's still the really low-income impoverished area five to ten years away so there's going to be an opportunity to bulk buy these historical houses and i've talked to the city of fort pierce where they are so open to <laughs> Jen, you're getting cut out like crazy all right. So you're you're in a bad service area. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mute you. Changing um, because wow. porn is still going. Stay. Okay. Okay. Residential Wow, I can't mute it. Residential. You guys still here? Oh. <laughs> 
sorry. Yeah, so you're in a really um, bad, I guess, I service area. So the entire thing is just like very choppy and robotic. Okay, so if you are going to have somebody, if you're looking at a deal in four peers, Jen would be the person that you want to have looking at the deal that knows the area, right? They know what the rents to be expected to be are. Are these realistic, right? So I do see it. Okay, this was back in, in 2022, but let's look like, wasn't that long ago. What are people actually paying? So I would actually take all of these rents and add them up and then do the underwriting that way. Now, there are some units renting at 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Nice. Okay. Um, and then some are already at the market rent. So it's good to know that it can get there. Now, you got to verify all of these things, right? And the applications and processes. Like, I believe this to be true. Everything in this area leases up super fast. Any studios, any one bedrooms lease up extremely fast in this area. All right, let's see. Um, I don't know. I would take like 950 maybe. Like I know because our building right now is at 950-ish. So let's pull that back up. Where's my underwriting sheet? So I would take 950 times the 56 units. So I would actually put 950 times the 56 uh, units. I would take like 5%, 5% vacancy. Let's, let's actually put in their numbers. Um, on this, so you don't you don't need to be super detailed on this. What you would do is you just want to get it close, and as the deals go on, as you find out more, you will update this sheet. But right now, you're just finding out what can I offer on this deal, and how do we, you know, what strategies we have to go with. So what is forty? Let's take the end five hundred twenty five thousand one hundred eighty two divided by six forty five four six one um about 81 percent so i don't know what is that they're just doing like 10 and 10 all right let me see what the gross potential rent is 950 times 56 times 12 638 not gross potential rent sorry that's how much they're probably renting currently and you always want to take the year yearly And you know what? We're going to just do this exercise um, just like instead of putting the exact information, just how to plug these things in. So let's just say it's $32,000 in vacancy a year. Oops, it's got to be negative. And then in bad leases and things like that, we'll do another 32000 Okay, so we're really looking at like 10% of the kind of like economic loss for this property. All right, other incomes. Yeah, there's like pet rents, things like that. I don't know. We'll just add like $2,000 to this. So it's really populating different, like see there's, it's populating, a, a, these are all like populating. These are different scenarios that you're going to change. But right now we're going to look at, um, just the offer itself this is the marketing package that they send you. So when we're looking at the expenses, now we want to see, um, Oh, they do. Have, they have a whole bunch of other income. Laundry income. Oh, that's good. Another five. Wow. Okay. So total other income is actually 96,000. Yeah. We're not going to believe that for now. I'm just going to leave it. Usually you can add about 5% to other income. So actually let's try that 538. Now these are all things like with time you would know 
Okay, so maybe there's $32,000 in other income. Oh, 5%, yeah. All right, um, advertising. Now we're going to look at their, their other expenses. So now we're on the expense side. So you see their administrative expenses, all that stuff. So where is it? Administrative, admin expenses, general and admin. You go to the end, 36,241. What else they got? They got marketing. So that's advertisements about total marketing is $6,949. Payroll. So, okay. Payroll down here. See, this sheet and most underwriting sheets that you'll find is very much already aligned to how they have T12s. Like industry is pretty standard with a lot of things. Um, repair and maintenance, we have 25,000. So like literally it just says right there. Uh, contract services, this is landscape, all of that. Oh, look at that, contract services. So seven, eight, five, four. Turnover expense, two, six, seven, zero. I, I don't know if this is, it's probably going to be higher, but we'll just kind of play along for now. We'll change it later. Utilities. Okay, so this property, they're also paying for utilities, I think, because this is really high for it. Um, and then management fee, they're saying is eighteen seven. Okay, so their management fee is at three percent. I know that they run in-house management, so we're gonna change that when we get to this second area. We'll probably put at least five to seven percent down on this. Five percent. It's payroll is the other part. All right, taxes. So cool thing, okay, cool thing is Las Vegas. This is 56 units and their taxes, real estate taxes, 10,928. All right, this is probably gonna increase by a little tiny bit when we, when we, sell, the, when we sell the property. Vegas and Nevada, they don't reassess taxes on sales, which is awesome. They just kind of go up a little bit every year. Um, and even when they do reassess, maybe like every seven years or five, seven years, something like that, it's still super low. It's, one, it's less than 2% of your, of your gross income. And then what do they got for insurance? My Florida house that I had... Um, which was about what did I buy it for like 390,000, something like that. It was close to the water. The insurance, the taxes on that property was 8,000 something. It's probably way more than that now a year on a, on a one unit versus this is a $9 million property having the same property taxes. I mean, 390,000 paying the same property taxes, a $9 million property. This is why you want to find, you can find the best market. When you do an invest like this, you want to find the best market to invest into real estate and where we are in the informational age, we don't need to stay in our backyard to make deals work. Partnerships is what's going to get you to that, you know, $26.5 million much faster. Um, all right, where is their insurance? Hello? Oh, insurance. This property, 15958 So yeah, insurance and taxes are extremely low in Vegas. This in, uh, in Houston, this number and this number together makes up about 40%, 35% of your, of your income. In Vegas, less than five. All right, this is the like advantage of investing in Vegas. And I know this because I live here. 
Now, I think they are operating at pretty high uh, expenses right now. Yeah, trash removal, everything was already added in there. Okay. Let's see. So their total expenses. I'm not going to manual override is 269000 And their NOI is 338786 Now, remember, we got to find out what the debt coverage ratio is. What will the lender lend us? Right now, if you were to get a new loan on this, I don't know, probably six. You would be safe to say 6.5%. All right. That means this deal, the debt service, 6.5 million on not, this is a very fast. Oh, also, you got to put operating reserves. Let's just say $1,000 a door. Okay. You don't really need to go that much higher, but having $56,000 in reserves are good. Now, for me personally, I always raise $200,000 or so for operational reserves. And that's why some of my deals, it may not look so sexy up front, but it is safe as heck. Because we're I'm about having that much money in the bank account and letting it sit and protect me from rainy day stuff. And that's just in our deals. All right, so it's not making sense at this number. So let's look at what number would make sense. Okay, maybe we don't put, I mean, we can't put any less down because the debt coverage ratio is 0.82. This deal right now at 9 million is negative cash flowing. Let's take, let's even take their projections. Okay, let's take their projections, which was their total, in, their total gross income was. Six hundred forty. It's not even that much more. So this is already at their like potential rent almost. Actually, no, something's wrong here. So let's take their ten fifty five. I know actually rents can go up to twelve fifty on these units. Okay, this was this is um, ten fifty five is extremely low. So we'll just do ten fifty five times twelve times 56. So really, I think conservatively, you can say that you can get 1096, uh, seven, 708,000. Okay. We're still not there. Like, how can we make this deal work at this price? Now we can't pay 9 million. We're like, dude, we can't pay 9 million. This is now your version. Remember, this is that you can compare them. The version going in was this. And maybe we shouldn't even change it. Let's just see what price we would be at without changing it. Okay, we can't pay that. It's too much. So you're, what we're looking at based on the NOI, okay, $355,000. Oh, wait, sorry. We forgot to put the, let's put 5% um, management fee. Okay. At this number, we are negative cash flowing on this deal, $84,000 a year. We can't make this deal work. We're going in at a cap rate, okay, of 3.62%. The rule of thumb is if your interest rates is higher than your cap rate, then you will probably be negative cash flowing. You want this number to be higher than this. So what can we get this at? All right. And even if they gave us, let's say they gave us interest only, which we're not going to, we don't, we're not going to underwrite deals. We're not going to go past this part. You know, there's other things that we'll look at here. So like this deal doesn't even have a positive return, but we're not even going to get past this until we can make sense of the deal. We're not even going to put that in. So let's say... I don't know. We can, what's $8 million look like? If we offered $8 million, not very big difference. Like this deal already is going to be really tough to work. 6 million. Yeah. At 6 million, we're almost there. We are not even there. 
you will positive cash flow 52,000. Now, if this is in a great, great, great location, if you believe in this location, a, like, you know, wholeheartedly, then you can, you know, like when I underwrite deals, there's two things that's happening. One, I'm thinking about how conservative I got to be on the numbers. Two, I want to look at why I would, why I will want to buy this deal. See, everybody looks at deals with the eye and this is just me. Okay. I'm not saying this is like, everybody should do this. I personally believe if I look at a deal, I should look at why I love this deal, why I want this deal, not why I don't want this deal. See, everybody that underwrites deals are looking at it from a place of why I would not want this deal. And that's kind of like underwriting. So what I would do is, you know, I would talk to the brokers at this point. So we can't really go too much further. Let's just say instead of 9 million, they want $5 million for this deal. Okay, if they want $5 million for this deal, you buy this thing blind. Because now you're buying at under 100,000 a door. All of this, I mean, everything. So see, now the numbers work. See, it's in green now. All right, and I know that Vegas operations is around 35%. Okay, so I don't need to, you know, this is, this is really high. So if I knew that, even if this was at 9 million, and I'm like, all right, let's get this expense down. I'm going to override it 35%. Still negative. This is just, it's not going to work at this number. Oh, wait, this is too high. Okay, so any, any one of you guys, if you, have a, if you don't have one of these sheets, it's very simple to actually go over like on a napkin too. You can find this out very easily on a napkin. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll actually go through it and show you guys that you don't really have to use this right off the bat. If this is when you want to get really detailed and you got to send this to the lender. And then they're going to do an underwriting based on that. What I also do is I have the property management company look at my numbers and tell me how accurate I am. Like this is some, this is a, you know, if, if you're here and you're going to do a deal, this one thing should be the money worth moment for you to be here. Okay, Robert Martinez always says, find your money worth moment. This money worth moment is that when you are looking at a deal, engage the property management company. They're not going to lie to you about anything. They're just like, I want to make, if you're going to be my new boss, I want you to like me, right? So they're just like completely neutral. They're not going to cover up anything, hide anything for the owner. All right, so you're going to say, hey, can you take a look at my underwriting and tell me, Tell me how off I am with everything, right? He might be like, oh, well, this number's way off. That number's way off. And I think, you know, and then ask for trajectory. What do you think? You manage, you guys manage a lot of properties out here. What do you, what do you think about this property and where it's headed and where it's going? All right. And then what I would also look at is I would go on to something like Property Radar or CoStar and find out how much they bought the building for, what's their debt at, Okay, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. A lot, most people underwrite and it's just stuck on underwriting. Underwriting, this call is called underwriting, but underwriting has so much more to it. You got to find out the story. This gives you a, a piece of the story. The other part of the story is um, why are they selling? Why are they interested in selling? Okay, if you, and you dig enough and you'll find out. Like this broker right now, I don't trust this broker already because of the T12 he sent me. All right. And then also when I met the broker, he was very cocky. He was very like, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't have a very good feeling working with him. I knew he just, just off the bat, like he's a, he's a bullshitter. And then now I, I verified it with the T12 he gave me. And then the inconsistency that's on the OM. You see most brokers, especially if they're newer, they actually don't even really know like how to do a deal. They don't buy deals. They don't operate deals. They're just selling deals and they're selling numbers on what's given to them, what's told to them. And you can find out. See, A, you're looking, to, you're looking for the story. And B, you're looking for um, how much does this broker know? Like, will this broker like 
BS me, it's fine. They're, they're all going to BS you, but how far will they go? That's what you got to find out. They're going to be like, oh, there's like, you know, three other, you know, bidders, things like that. Like we were looking, we were looking at a deal in Stewart. We knew the other two people that were looking. It's so funny. Like it just so happens that it was like part of our circle that was all looking at that same deal. And they were only discussing the deal and the brokers trying to leverage that and, and, and tell me, oh, somebody's coming in. They're about to make an offer. And I'm like, I know they're not going to make an offer. Right. So like, I'm finding it out. I'm not telling him directly. I want to know how far he's going to be. Yes. But you got to find all the information and the underwriting sheet gives you, you know, how to find how much it's a piece of the story. And then you'll find out once you look into the debt, mostly that will tell another story. All right. Where we are in our market today. Why would you sell your property? Like you're not going to get top value for your property. Why are, why are you selling it? And here's what they're going to say. Oh, you know, they're just tired of running it. They want to retire. This is two stories. Either they want to retire and then be done or the partners are fighting and they want out. <laughs> it's, it's like every single story, every single deal. You're like, okay, yeah, 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 great. Then you look at the debt. And on that deal, we found out why the seller is so desperate. I'm like, yo, I'm like ignoring this broker and the broker is messaging me. Hey, just submit an offer, submit an offer. I'm like, anything? Yeah, 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 just submit anything. I'm like, no, I don't even want to do it. I want to find out what the story is. See, he just gave me a piece of this story by being so desperate. So we look into the debt and the loan is due July 1st. I'm like, oh, okay. If you're going to take this deal and go refinance your loan, you're going to be, you're going to be in trouble, All right? So either it's that, you know, these guys also have owned the deal for a while. They don't have a lot of debt, but if they go and pick up a refinance, they're going to lose a whole bunch of equity. So you can put all these things together. So like understanding the puzzle, you know, I should rename this call, like underwriting, like understanding the puzzle. Cause it's all a piece of, it's all a, it's all like a story that you want to find out so that you can be the, in the best position to take it down. Now, again, do you love the deal? I, I, I also do a lot of calls on spirituality and teaching about your intuition, that you are a genius already. Okay, if you can channel to, to whatever you want to call it, God, cosmic intelligence, you know, okay, there's a knowingness on if this is a, the right thing for you or not. And so do I love this deal? Is there an intuitive feeling about this deal? And we got to practice strengthening that. Okay. And it comes, it comes with all sorts of things. I'll tell you, like I practice my intuitive feelings on all sorts of stuff. Like the other day, I think I shared this before, but um, definitely not on this call. I left my shoes at the bottom of the stairs, which I leave all the time. And then I just had a feeling that I should move it. So I go and move it and I put it in the closet. I never do it. I just leave it out all the time. And then later on, my wife is carrying this big box that she can't see anything. And she's coming down the stairs. And I'm like, wow, there it is. That's why I got to listen to my intuition. I start to have a relationship to that intuitive feeling. Right? Because if my shoes were right there, she's definitely not seeing it. She almost tripped and fell down the stairs herself anyways. I'm like, yo, why are you carrying this big ass box? Give me this box. Right. And um, if my shoes were there, she would have 100 percent rolled her ankle, something fell, broke something, you know, whatever was in the box, probably be all over the place. And then I would get yelled at. So all of it was prevented by me listening to my intuitive feeling to just move my shoes. OK, and now I put my shoes away every day because I was like, wow, all right, let's not have that ever happen. Right. So it's the same thing with real estate properties. Why do I love this deal? Like it's calling to me. It's calling to your intuition. When you start to understand them more, when you got the facts, you got the stories, your, your intuition will really kick in. Your inner genius will kick in. Okay. That's not the topic of our conversation. I just like to go there sometimes because I'm super woo woo about stuff. Um, all right. So how do we make this deal work? How do we love this deal? We have to tweak the numbers because we know through experience, we know what we can do here. Hey, seller, is there a loan? Is there an assumption here? Can we assume the loan? 
like our deal that we're getting, we're getting at 4.4%. So what happens if there is a 4.4%? See how big of a difference that makes? Okay, from 6.5 to 4.4 is $85,000 in difference in the loan. That's not a, it's 2.1% difference. And it's $81,000 of income that you should be putting in your pocket or your investor's pocket. Now, this is, this is all really, um, you know, small pieces that you can put together. So let's just go back to scenario number two. All right. Let's just say we found a sick deal and it's, this is, this is the value five, five million dollars. We put 40% down. We have great DSCR on this, you know, this, the higher the DSCR, the safer your deal. Okay. The people that are getting in trouble, they came in at this DSCR, these, and they got adjustable loans. Bridge loans will let you get deals at negative cash flow or even cash flow. And they'll say, we'll give you for your projections. You're going to go in and renovate, and your you know, monthly is going to be you know, $1,300. Oh, wait, that doesn't even change anything. So let me undo that. I don't know. Let's just say they're, they're going to give you people are there were people underwriting for future income after renovations. And then the bridge loans like, yeah, sure. We'll give it to you. You know, if the loan, if the rates stayed the same or around the same, or even one or two points higher, you might be able to weather that. But when interest rates went up 5%, right? This is how that guy in Houston. Okay. I just read another article yesterday. Okay, he lost $250 million, okay, of, of his assets. I think it was like 3,200 units in the Houston area. They actually labeled his properties Class E. I didn't know there was a Class E deal. That's worse than D. So he went and got Class E deals. I don't know how. So he got, you know, 3,200 units for $250 million. Okay, so this is like, what is that? Let me let me just see what that even comes out to per door. Two hundred fifty million um, divided by what did I say? Thirty two hundred. Seventy eight thousand dollars a door for Class E deals. I don't I don't even know what a Class E deal looks like. I don't even want to go there. All right, but he's got a bunch of these deals. We were at a mastermind. Robert's like, who the hell would even buy there? So of course those deals. Before, like he owned the deal for so short of a period of time and he lost it in like less than a year. The second the market had troubles, he lost it. He lost it. He lost those. And then now there's another $85 million loan coming into foreclosure. They missed January, February, March, April payments on their mortgage. I don't even know who's running it. I don't know what's what's happening. I mean, I, I see the pictures of this guy. They're trying to call the other different sponsors that are on there. And, you know, everybody's kind of ghosted it. Like the investors are like, are, are screwed, you know? So another deal coming back to the bank from that same group. And they have, they were once the biggest operators. They became the biggest operators in Houston in Less than, less than two years. So as an investor, this call is also important for you, you know, to understand and look at how much does this operator actually know? You know, and, um, and you know, I love, I love Brad Sumrock. I think he's amazing. But all of those guys that were leading that deal, they're all like coaches of Brad Sumrock's group. And so his name was in the article. Brad Sumrock's name was in the article and so was Grant Cardone's because Brad Sumrock is Grant Cardone's student. You see how reputation is like the biggest thing in here. You know, I sent, I sent Brad some, some, you know, some, uh, you know, loving uh, text messages like, Hey man, just, just hope you're, hope you're doing well, you know, like sending much love to you and, and, and Jen and, 
you know, all of that, because I feel the pain. I feel the pain for this guy that lost this deal. He's probably not a bad guy, you know, and now he's all over the newspaper. I, I don't even know how he faces his family, his kids in school, all this stuff. I, I don't know. Right. And so, yeah, anyways, besides the point, um, that's how people got into trouble. Now, this 1.43 DSCR, awesome. Uh, an agency debt, the government will back your loan. That shows a solid loan. And you will get this thing fixed. And you probably don't want six and a half fixed, but that's probably where it's at now. Maybe by the end of the year, it won't be there. But when you go to this next page, and what time is it? Where are we? Okay. Real quick, I'll go over this. When, when you go to the next page, you can go to the scenario. Okay, which scenario am I going to look at? This is one, two, three, four. You can drag this out. You can make more different scenarios. And it's going to give you your returns. All right. So even if we bought this deal at $5 million, the P&O will give you the cash on cash. Like, think about how good a deal has to be to even be cash flowing a deal and how, how hard it is to actually make that happen. Now, for our deal, we do a 70-30 split. We do 2% asset management, 2% acquisition, 2% exit. With all of that, we're able to bring our IRR to 17 you know, um, our total returns to to 101%. That's how good a deal's got to be if you, if you were to even put it here. And so just putting that into comparison, because I can, I can finagle with this thing all I want, right? I can take this 1% thing. Let, let's, let's see how we can play with it. All right. We're going to go here. We're going to say, all right, Rents are 955. By the second year, we're going to go to 1500. Okay, there's a lot of crazy underwriting like this. Sorry, I won't put 1500. I will put more realistic. See, the numbers are now going up drastically just by increasing the rents. So it is true. If you can increase rents, I think this property can actually do 1250. I truly do. And I also think, you know, the uh and then it's going to bring the cash flow up. But this deal is never going to trade at 5 million. So I'm trying to figure out what I can get. Maybe at 8 million is probably the most that they will go. I mean, taking a million dollars off I got $900,000 off for, for when I offered on the deal. So, you know, this is, it's negative. If you pay that much. Even by bringing the rents up to twelve fifty, you can't even buy this deal at $8 million. So you can kind of just scratch this. Now, let me, um, we'll go deeper into underwriting sheets, you know, later. Maybe another time when when you work like closely with us, like our team, uh, part of our legends group, we actually learn this a lot more. Every week we actually go through, you know, one week we go through capital raise. Next week we go through asset management. The next week we go through um, underwriting. And then in between we'll have people like Robert Martinez. He's, he's scheduled to start speaking at our um, mastermind once a month. Um, next week we ha I have my CPA coming in. He's going to help build, like help you with your tax structures, LLC structures. The fundamentals are extremely important. Um, but let me pull up a, uh, what? Okay. Huh. I don't know if I'm going to need this or not. Let's just make a new page. All right, on this deal, if we're just going to do napkin underwrite, and after this, we'll wrap it up. 
feel free to ask questions. If you're going to do a napkin underwrite, $9 million is the offer. Where's the comma? $9 million is the offer. We're going to put 40% down. So we, we want to always have our calculator next to us. So, you know, feel free to take a piece of paper out and have, you know, if you're driving, don't do it, but you want to have a calculator with you. All right. I'm going to do $9 million times 40%. I'm going to put 40% down. So this is, this is the purchase price. This is the, the, the down payment that you got to put okay, So we'll just put down it is uh three, six, 3.6 million. Okay. Your loan is going to be, um, what's that? 6.4 million. That's your loan. This is your debt. All right. So let's find out. First of all, we know that six, 6.5% 6 is probably the debt that you're going to get. So my cost. Uh, yeah. 5.4 million. is going to be the debt. Oh, wait, 5.4. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry for interrupting. No, I'm glad that you're driving a freaking truck or whatever you're driving and paying attention to this. Make sure you pay attention to the road. <laughs> but appreciate it the rest of you guys is letting me make a 9 million minus 3.6 mistake okay i let it slide um 5.4 million times point uh what do i say six six point five percent so point zero six five that's the representation okay times point zero six five okay that's the representation of six point five percent all right and that number is your debt service your debt service each year is three hundred fifty one thousand dollars okay so now that we know that let's find out how much we can make on this property so they say right very quickly nine hundred fifty dollars per unit times 12 uh, 56 units times and we're not even gonna we're not even looking at their financials at this point we could and just take their number and whatever their noi is but you know we'll just do a quick napkin underwrite times 12 all right we're gonna say so 12 is 12 months 56 is 56 units 950 is the average rents and then we're gonna multiply it also by 0.9 for occupancy okay that is your you know 90 percent occupancy we're not gonna just take 100%. So 950 times 56 times 12 times 0.9. All right. So we're at $574. Five, that is our gross income. Okay. So this is going to give us our gross income. I'll just write it here. Gross income. Is... 574, 560. Okay. Um, now we're going to look at our expenses because we're trying to get our NOI. Our expenses, 0. 0.4, 40%. Okay. We're just saying 40% on this deal. So 40% expenses because I know the market and 40% is pretty on the high end already um, for this market. Oh, 0.4. So we multiply that. Let's put an X right here. Man, I'm pretty good at this uh, using the Microsoft Word document to do this. Okay, so what is 574 times 0.4? Okay, 200. This is now your NOI, okay? Your NOI equals 299,824. DSCR equals your NOI divided by debt service. All right, now we know 229,824 divided by the 351 is a 0.65, okay? And no, nobody's, 
probably a bridge lender won't even lend you money on this. And we can see already that we're going to be negative uh, $52,000 a year in cash flow. Our cash flow, it's called a free cash flow, is negative, I don't know, what is that? 50, 50, uh, 51, 51,000. I don't know, 176. Yeah. But in parentheses. That is correct. Okay. Great. So that's your cash flow. We're like, this deal ain't going to work. How can we make it work, right? What, 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 what needs to happen? So when you napkin underwrite, when it's this far off, all you have to do now to save time, I mean, this could be done in three minutes. Okay, three minutes, you can do this, napkin underwrite. This allows you to underwrite a lot more deals in the day. If you were plugging everything into that underwriting sheet, you'd get like two done a day and then you'd be exhausted. But this, all right, call the broker. Hey, are they, are they, it doesn't work for us at 9 million. Not even close. All right, what, what are they willing to do? Ah, uh, you know, they might be willing to come down 500K. Just by looking at this deal, no, I can't do it. Sorry, man. You know, I, I don't know what numbers you're getting at, but I'm going to be negative 51,000 cash flow. These are the types of conversations you want to have with a broker straight up with the numbers because you don't got to feel inauthentic. You don't got to feel less than, and none of that really matters when you're talking to the broker. See, when you're talking to the broker, trying to impress a broker, that's when they know you're full of shit. But when you just go straight with the numbers, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Sorry. Give me another deal. You know, I'm looking at other deals. He at least knows that if you can make numbers work, you're more serious than the, than the average person that's looking at these deals. Okay. So that's another piece of the puzzle is to create that relationship with the broker. All right. So that you get the respect. How many brokers can you build that relationship with? You know, all the brokers in Stewart, Fort Pierce, you know, Port St. Lucie, Vero Beach, they know our team. They know Legends, even West Palm Beach. The brokers all know Legends Equity Group because we closed a deal in some crazy time. You know, like they were, they had never even heard of the way that we've done it. Like we made a splash on our first deal over there. So all we have to do is say, hey, yeah, that's the deal we closed. That's us. They're immediately like, okay, cool. Let's send you more deals to look at. A, they know you've closed the deal, commercial deal. And B, you did it in record fashion. So yeah, that's, um, you know, this is the napkin underwrite real quick. I'm just gonna, I don't know. I've just been talking the entire time minus like Svelo checking my math. What's everybody like, what, give me some, some feedback on what you guys think about, you know, this, is it too basic? Is it still too advanced? You know, I want to make sure that I do always serve the people that are here. You know, the people that aren't here, I don't know. They'll ask next time. And I'll try to make this call a little more consistent. You know, my, num my Monday night calls, I like, I never miss, but this call, sometimes there's like 75 people here. Sometimes there's, 20 you know and um so yeah what, what do you guys think is this like is this valuable anybody hey brother alex uh really quick this is Fedler here hello everybody uh so i just want to point out a couple of things uh we took 40 percent uh expenses uh conservatively we uh tend to underwrite on 50 percent but like yeah. uh, brother Alex, he said he knows the market expenses in Nevada are much less. So 40% is a high end. Yeah. That's one. Uh, second, the NOI uh, is 60% of the, the gross. So actually the NOI will be three. Somebody texted it really quick. 344,736. I just confirmed that number. So oh. you put the 40% instead of the 60%. Look at, look at you catching, catching all the things. You're right. So. Well, I saw well, somebody just uh, mention it and I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this is why you got to you got to do this uh, multiple times. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So yeah. So really so, quick, and uh, and yeah, another thing yeah. is, if somebody doesn't know the nine hundred and fifty the rent times the units times the twelve months is the zero point nine. Conservatively, we underwrite ninety percent occupancy. <laughs> uh that's what the napkin underwriting if somebody doesn't know that that 0 0.9 earlier that's uh we always uh on a napkin 90 percent occupancy conservatively could be more could be less but that's what we do so thank you yeah true good call renee and thanks uh uh Svetlo. yeah so this is still negative it's still negative like seven thousand dollars something six thousand whatever Six thousand two hundred sixty four. All right, so it's not as bad. Negative. All right, DSCR is close to one, you know, and that's what we saw. We saw on the underwriting sheet, it was about one. Right when we did it at this at this forty percent expense, and so we're close. Three three forty four seven thirty six divided by three fifty one. Yeah, your DSCR is point nine eight. So based on the napkin underwriting, we're we're pretty close to the to the sheet. Right now, the sheet is for you to become you know like to actually take it, show it to your you know lender, show it to your management company you know and, and continue to monitor it because these numbers will always change and then you want to be able to plug it in right there somewhere and see the change All right so once this deal meets certain criterias you're going to say yeah let's let's uh let's let's move forward with it because i love the location of the deal right now this right here will not deter me from this deal because i know this number will be higher i can get it higher and um, yeah, and, and it's a small enough deal that I will be on like hands on managing, keeping the expense a certain level. You know, the management company will need to be a management company that will allow me to walk all over them. Okay, I'm not going to go for a big management company that is, you know, uh, that manages. 150 units minimum like convince them to manage this deal because they're going to charge a lot more and they're not even going to be willing to to uh kind of listen to whatever you want them to do all the time smaller management company right that's just paying the bills collecting the rents you know putting the putting the listing on all the different places that it needs to go and uh and providing me a pnl that's the basics of what I will want in a management company here. Right now, our big our big management company for our storage deal, they are doing, uh, they're overseeing capex, they're overseeing maintenance, right? They're overseeing the entire property, they're overseeing any transaction things that we're doing. Like that's happening on um, on our bigger deal, because we can the, the, we can afford to have to pay for, um, you know, a, a management company like that. But this deal, no, this deal is going to highly depend on you as the operator to make sure that your investors make money on this deal. And it can, you can make a lot of money on this deal because of the location is great. The location is not as great as the, as the downtown Fremont one that we have, but it's still in a place that can explode, that can pop. Right, you want a deal that is cash flowing, that is in a great upcoming location. Right, and it doesn't really require one employer to make that location pop. Right, Detroit was somewhere that was reliant on one employer, Ford, and once Ford decided to lay fifty percent of the people off, the entire real estate uh, market crashed in that area but what that what does that mean that also means there's a lot of potential in there i know people that bought like 120 unit apartments for like two hundred thousand dollars 
I mean, you can't go wrong buying that, period. Doesn't even matter where it is, right? If those operators from Houston bought 120 units for $200,000, ain't no way they're going down, right? You, If anything, worst case scenario, you just out of pocket, come up with another couple hundred thousand dollars. It's not $120 million. That's not recoverable when things like that happen, right? But on a deal that's, you know, two hundred thousand dollars for one hundred twenty units, I mean, you you basically can charge fifty dollars a unit for rent and make money. <laughs> so, you know, when when that happened in Detroit, now those buildings are worth like two, three, four million dollars, which is cool. You know, still, I still think it's cheap. One hundred twenty units for four million dollars. What is that? 120 units divided by uh, 120 units. Oops, 4 million divided by 120 units. 33,000 a door. Like what? You can, you charge $300 a month for rent and now you're, you're in the money for that. All right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> all right so last thoughts last questions 